Seven years ago, I first reported to the Senate some evidence that a war was then being waged against America's standards of decency by some self-proclaimed artists funded by the National Endowment for the Arts. have tried in vain to persuade the American people that such so-called art deserved the taxpayers' money allocated to the arrogant artists whose minds belong in the sewer. of these self-proclaimed artists consist of a wide range of curious individuals who have no regard for decency. Performing their live sex acts, filthy homosexual photographs, bodies of dead men and women to produce stomach-churning photographs from burning the American flag to flouting their own bodies and those of others. Such depravity knows no bounds. This bill finally alleviates the burden shouldered by the American taxpayers of allocating money every year to an agency whose mission has been sorely mistreated. The strings will be cut and the government will no longer be in the business of propping up a group of people who are in a lifelong crusade to destroy the Judeo-Christian foundations of this country. for the Arts Termination Act of 1997, placed in the Senate, calendar number 8, 105th Congress, first session, section 48, a bill to abolish the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Council on the Arts in the Senate of the United States, January 21st, 1997. 
Mr. Helms introduced the following bill, which was read twice and placed on the calendar. Endowment for the Arts and the National Council on the Arts, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. Section 1, short title. This act may be cited as the National Endowment for the Arts Termination Act of 1997. Section 2, termination of the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Council on the Arts. Sections 5, 5A, and 6 of the National Foundation for the Arts and the Humanities Act of 1965 are repealed. Section 3, Conforming Amendments. A. Declaration of Purpose. Section 2 of the National Foundation on the Arts and the Humanities Act of 1965 is amended. One in paragraphs one and six. By striking arts and the three in paragraph four. By striking the arts and four in paragraph five A. By striking by the arts and B by striking arts and five in paragraph seven A by striking practice of the art and the B by striking artists or and C by striking creative Exposed himself, and she performed oral sex. He stopped before ejaculated. He was talking about performing oral sex. He was chewing on the cigar, and then he had the cigar in his hand. He was kind of looking at the cigar in sort of a naughty way. And so I looked at the cigar and I said, We can do that too. It tastes good. Mr. 
speaker. I rise today to introduce the Plumbing Standards Improvement Act of 1999. aware of the problem our national plumbing laws have created when I began to receive complaints from a variety of frustrated individuals. These discontented consumers, plumbers, remodelers, landlords, home builders, and others were upset their new expensive toilets were repeatedly clogging and consistently required mountain mouth flushes. The message is clear and often written on toilet paper. Get the government out of my bathroom! If some consumers want tiny toilets or trickling shower heads, the economy will produce these products. Time to heed the call of suffering Americans. Pass the Plumbing Standards Improvement Act of 1999 and restore wisdom to our federal government. <laughs> <laughs>